All right, well, hello there. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these problems that are based on acceleration. Uh, we know a little bit about constant velocity now, um, learned a little bit about constant acceleration, so we're ready to go. Um, so number one here, I know we did this in class, but just in case you need a re refresher on it or a little bit of a review, let's go ahead and take a look at it together. So we've got this ball that's rolling down a hill with a constant acceleration of negative three meters per second squared. Uh, it tells us that we're starting from rest, we want to know what the velocity is of this ball at the end of four seconds. Um, so there's a couple of different things that we could do here. Personally, I like to go through and um, start marking off, highlighting, underlining, boxing off, whatever you want to do, um, all of our variables. So meters per second squared, that tells me that this is an acceleration that I'm dealing with. So my acceleration is going to be negative three meters per second squared. Uh, if it starts from rest, that actually tells us something right there, starts from rest tells me what my initial velocity is. Right. Initial because it's starting from that and that's what our initial would of course be. And this would specifically be zero meters per second because again it's starting from rest so it's it has a velocity it's just got a velocity of zero. And we want to know what its final velocity is. What is its final velocity? So that would be the final we're not really sure of at the end of four seconds. So now I know my acceleration, I know some stuff about my velocities, both uh, an initial and that I'm looking for a final, and I know what my, my time is, and this is four seconds, and I should keep my unit in here as well. I just had it in there before, which is why I didn't write it a second time, but it's good practice to do that. All right, so if you're ever bogged down with these equations, um, I'll be honest, on this page, we're not really gonna use the equation for constant velocity because this is a, pro a, a page all about acceleration problems. But um, let's say we, we could potentially use this in, in other areas. How do I narrow down between these three equations that we're really using for this unit? Um, and really it comes down to what we're looking for, right? In this case, I know I'm an acceleration. So since this first formula doesn't take into account acceleration, I really I can't use it. Um, I could actually plug some numbers in there um, if I had a distance and if I had a time and I might have an acceleration as well and I'd plug some numbers in there and it would work out but it would give me a wrong answer because again this this particular equation doesn't deal with acceleration at all so I would get an answer it just would not be the right answer because the the math has to support the concept if this equation doesn't have acceleration in it and the problem does then I know that I can't I can't do that all right so how we can narrow it down a little bit further um, aside from saying well this doesn't have any sort of acceleration in it so that doesn't work. Uh, we could say, well, both of these equations, this middle two here, and realize that these middle two equations, this and this, are actually the same equation. They're just rearranged. If I were to actually solve for my change in velocity, which would be the same thing as a, as a v final minus a v initial, if I were to solve for final velocity, I would do so by multiplying both sides by t and then um, adding my initial velocity, so I would end up with Vf equals Vi plus At. I'd end up in the same place um, as, as what, I, what I am over here. So you can use this equation versus this equation. It really doesn't matter. They are both equally correct. It's just really what you prefer. I generally go with this equation just because there's no funky fractions that we've got to deal with then. Um, and it's just a, a cleaner looking formula aesthetically to me. Um, there's really no better reason than, than that, I'll be honest. Um, and then finally we have this other formula which deals with distance and initial velocity which is important to, to note that this is specifically an initial velocity it's not just any old velocity and then of course it deals with acceleration and time as well so this first problem I don't know anything about distance and I don't know anything about a, a final velocity so without knowing anything about distance I can't really I can't really deal with this um, without knowing anything about final velocity, I can still use this formula. It just so happens that I'm going to end up solving for final velocity here. So it actually helps me narrow it down to this formula that I will be that I will be dealing with. Um, so I like to always rewrite the formula, even though it's right above there. It's just nice because then we can easily drop in numbers right underneath each one of these variables, and it just ke keeps things nice and lined up for us and it's really easy to go back and see where we made a mistake if we did make a mistake um, if the formula is present you know even people with their PhDs in physics they're always writing the formulas out um, even though a lot of those guys and girls can can do it in their head 
um, it's still something that is is good to have those formulas there just for clarity and for other people to be able to read your thought process as well all right so my final velocity I don't know that's the whole purpose of doing this problem um, we do know that our initial velocity it said that we were starting from rest so I'll put my initial velocity in pink there and I'm just gonna continue on with the the color scheme here to make sure that it's really obvious where my numbers are coming from and then we still have to add in no oh, different color green there but you get the uh, you get the picture we still have to add in uh, my acceleration times time and my acceleration it does tell us is negative three meters per second I guess we'll go with orange there and then my time does tell us that it is four seconds and I'm getting that from over here so when we go to solve this out it becomes a, a much simpler problem different colored greens drive me nuts I'm a little bit of a perfectionist on that alright so when I go to find my final velocity, it just ends up becoming negative 3 times 4, which gives me negative 12. I could leave the 0 in here and say 0 plus this, but we know that that's not going to change anything in the end, so a lot of times I will just leave that out of the, of the formula just for the sake of making it look a little bit more pleasing. Um, and then finally, I need to know what my, what my velocity is so I need to make sure that this is in fact velocity that I solved for and we need to make sure that we've got a, a unit in there uh, which would be meters per second if I'm dealing with velocity so that would be my final answer my final velocity is a negative 12 meters per second now something that could be a point of confusion is what exactly this negative represents because um, that negative could mean a couple of different things it might mean that I am slowing down it could be that I am going down. It could be a combination thereof. Let's see what, uh, what exactly is happening here. So a diagram always helps in problems such as this. So I'm just going to diagram this ball rolling down a hill. And I love the magic of notability. It makes me feel like I can actually draw a straight line, which is kind of nice. Um, but let's say I've got this ball, and it is going down the hill. Look at that. It's even, even more magic there. But this ball is going to continue to go down this hill for a while. And what do we know, sort of common sense-wise, about if I were to roll a ball down a hill? Well, it would continue to get faster and faster. So to begin with, it seems kind of weird, because it says that we're starting from rest, which is 0 meters per second to begin with. So how is it that I could have a negative 3 meter per second squared acceleration? Because that could mean that I'm slowing down. Well, if I'm at rest... There's no way that I'm going to slow down. What's slower than stopped? There is, there is nothing. So what's actually happening here is this negative 3 meters per second squared. After we draw the diagram out, it becomes a little bit more clear that this ball is going down. So that negative 3 meters per second squared means we're actually gaining velocity in the downwards direction. So it's kind of weird that negative means gaining in this case, but it just so happens that we're going in the, in the downwards direction. So... We are gaining speed in the downwards direction. And take a minute to, to let that settle. You know, pause this if you, if you need to or whatnot, um, because this is a really key point. A lot of times the negative means slowing down with acceleration, but there are times such as this where it actually means going down. Um, so in the end, my final velocity is 12 meters per second in the downwards direction. All right, so let's take a look at number two here. We've got this car that's starting from rest. It's being accelerated at a constant rate of negative three meters per second, and we want to know what the velocity is at the end of 10 seconds. So again, this looks like a problem that's fairly similar. We're starting from rest, so I know I've got an initial velocity that I'm going to be dealing with. It's going to be accelerated at this constant rate of 3 meters per second squared. So I have an acceleration there. And we want to know what the velocity is at the end of 10 seconds. So what is the velocity would tell me that I'm looking for a final velocity. I'm not really sure what that is quite yet. And of course we know our time is 10 seconds. 
All right, so hopefully this looks pretty familiar um, compared to the, the problem from, from above here. Um, I know I, a time, which doesn't really help me narrow anything down because all these formulas deal with time. And when we think about motion, it's always relative to um, some sort of starting point and with time passing. So that doesn't really help us narrow down much. Um, I know I've got an acceleration, so that narrows it down to this either these middle this middle formula or this final one. And it is asking for a final velocity. This formula doesn't have anything to do with final velocity because, remember, this velocity that's here, it's very specific. It refers to an initial velocity. So since I'm looking for a final velocity, there's really only one formula that deals with that. So I'm going to use the same formula as above. Yes, I'm still going to write out the formula just because um, it helps clarity-wise. Um, when going through this, whether or not I was making an answer key like this or a video or actually doing this on my own, a lot of these problems after teaching physics for over a decade, I can do these in my head no problem, but it still makes more sense to actually have the, the formula laid out there even if I'm doing this on my on my own personal time. I know that sounds really, really exciting to everybody that's that's listening to this. Alright, so what is the what is the velocity in the end? Not really sure. We know that our equals is gonna stay in there and our plus sign is gonna stay in there. Um, I'm going to get ready to drop my acceleration in here, my time in here. It um, tells me that I'm starting from rest, so my initial velocity is zero. My acceleration looks like it is three. And my time, it tells us, is 10 seconds. Just realize I kind of pick some colors that weren't the best, one's an orange, one's a red, I can barely tell the difference between that, but hopefully you get the the idea where, our, where we're getting these numbers from. So in the end, my final velocity becomes something that's fairly simple, three times 10, that's, that's it. And since I know that this is a velocity that I'm dealing with, it's going to be in meters per second. And something that may be useful is to have a little chart off to the side that um, deals with what our units are and what our variables are that are associated with each one of those units. So if I see something in meters, a number in meters, that means that I'm dealing with a distance or displacement. If I see a unit of meters per second, I know that I'm dealing with a velocity. If I see a weird unit of meters per second squared, then I know I'm dealing with acceleration. And remember, when we do see this strange unit, all it means is that I'm increasing my meters per second or increasing my velocity for every every second. So in other words, it's meters per second per second, which is kind of confusing, so it sounds much better just to say meters per second squared. And realize we don't do anything with this squared throughout our, our math. It's simply part of the unit. We wouldn't multiply if we had a number that was like 2m. We wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't look at this as 2 times m. We'd look at it as, well, this is 2 meters. We wouldn't actually multiply by the unit. So when we do see some things like two meters per second squared, that meters per second squared is just simply part of the unit. It's not like I'm taking two and squaring it or anything like that. It's simply part of the unit, and we would treat it as, as just a just another unit, albeit kind of a funky one. All right. So in the end, it looks like my uh, my car is going to be going 30 meters per second. And hopefully, we look at this and realize that it that it does make sense. You know, if I'm starting from rest and I was accelerating for 10 seconds three meters per second every single one of those seconds at 30 meters per second is very um, very reasonable answer and we could of course go back and, and check our work which really you should with all of these problems all right so let's take a look at number three here we've got this car that's traveling at 25 meters per second it's being brought to rest at a constant rate in 20 seconds by applying a brake what's our what's our constant acceleration here um, so it says that the, the car is traveling at 25 meters per second, which means it's already going 25 meters per second, or in other words, it's initially going that fast. And then it's brought to rest. Well, brought to rest tells us something. Uh, it tells us that our final velocity is going to be zero. Rest be represented by zero meters per second mathematically. Um, and it is being brought to rest at a constant rate. So it's, in other words, it's constantly slowing down. It doesn't have like some sort of jerky, weird motion. It's just coming coming to rest at a nice constant rate. Um, 
and it tells us that we are doing this over the course of 20 seconds by applying a break probably could have figured that out without the problem telling you right uh, we want to know what its constant acceleration is in other words what's a right. so hopefully you already kind of recognize the the um, formula that we're going to be using here I have a final velocity even though the final velocity is zero it's still a final velocity so there's only one formula that deals with final velocity and that's the one that we used uh, yet again above So final velocity is equal to an initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Uh, my final velocity we said was zero. I'm getting that from up here brought to rest. Which is weird because normally we're solving for V final, but in this case we actually know it, which is perfectly fine. We don't have to use this formula only to solve for a final velocity. I could use this formula to solve for an initial velocity and acceleration or time. So my initial velocity says it was 25 meters per second. Getting ready to figure out what my uh, my A and my, my T are. A we don't know, but T I know there's going to be some sort of number there. And we already know what that number is. It comes from the number above there, 20, 20 seconds. All right, so math's a little bit different here just because we are solving for this acceleration instead of the final velocity but again that's that's fine um, so just to get rid of the colors here I'll rewrite this to give it a little more clarity a times 20 could be better written as 20 a alright so there's a lot of students that I've seen over the years that have trouble with you know do I do I multiply 20 by something do I divide it do I take care of this addition somehow and rather than thinking about all of all of that, look at the variable and say, how do I how do I get rid of this variable? Um, don't look at it as what am I doing to these two numbers? So currently, a is being multiplied by 20. Um, so I'm going to have to get rid of that 20 somehow. But let's even look further away from the variable. Let's get rid of everything that isn't associated with that variable to begin with. Um, so this 25 is the furthest thing away from my variable not necessarily distance wise but mathematically wise this 25 um, isn't associated with the variable at all so let's just get rid of it to clean up our work a little bit so 25 to get rid of it would be of course subtract 25 if I do it to one side I've got to do it to the other so I end up with 0 minus 25 which is negative 25 of course equals 20a so now I'm back at the back with the same question now how do I get A by itself? Again, don't look at this as what do I do to negative 25 and 20. Um, if you are looking at it that way, it's very, very, very easy to make mistakes. So what, uh, what should I do to get A by itself? Well, it's currently being multiplied by 20, so let's do the opposite. Let's divide by 20. And if I do it to this side, now I have to do it to the other side. I still don't even care about this number over here. Any number that would be over here, I would divide by... 20. And I'm left with A equals something. Well, that something happens to be negative 25 over 20, which you could plug into a, um, could plug into your calculator, of course. But hopefully you can figure out what the answer is before even getting to that point. And again, that's really useful to to have some sort of mental number in your head um, before even, even throwing it in the calculator because it's just going to sharpen your number sense which is really really good um, to be able to have a, a strong number sense and it, it, not only in physics but just SAT wise when you do get to that point or later in life so you know you, you know whether or not you're you know maybe even getting you know ripped off in a business transaction or something like that you really want to be able to think pretty quickly on your feet with numbers so negative 25 over 20 can be one point something. Actually, negative one point something. Uh, negative 20 over 20 would be one. Five over 20 is a quarter. So negative 1.25, and it is an acceleration. 
which if we scrolled back up we would see the little um, little chart that we had written out before um, or we know that acceleration is again associated with that weird kind of funky unit of meters per second squared right. and that is my my final acceleration now the negative in this case is different from the negative in question question number one right. the negative here represented that we were going down this ball was going in the downwards direction the negative here actually represents that we are that we are slowing down we have a, a negative velocity uh, by by the end we were, were I shouldn't say we had a negative velocity we were going in the negative direction with our velocity I should say which means that we have a, a negative acceleration so we're slowing down by 1.25 meters per second every single second that we are that we are traveling for so if we were to actually draw this out we'd see that um, might be that our, our car is going in this direction to begin with it's going fast over this time period um, then we're getting slower how do I know that we're getting slower because I'm covering less distance than I was originally the next time increment I'm covering even less distance than I was with the previous time increment in this final time increment here I'm covering even less distance than before so I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller in terms of the amount of distance that I'm covering until the point where there's going to be no more no more distance increasing whatsoever I'm going to be completely stopped All right so number four what will be the velocity of the car in problem number three at the end of 17 seconds kind of a, a weird way of wording that I guess but um, we get the we get the picture that um, we are looking for the velocity of the car at the end of 17 seconds. So there's a number of ways we could do this problem and hopefully you remember me saying in, in physics a couple of times now, a bunch of times now, that there's multiple ways that you can get to a right answer. It's a very creative process. It doesn't have to be just a, sort of one way of doing things. Um, so the way that's probably the most straightforward, but again, most straightforward for you versus me could be entirely different things. So if you come up with a different route to find this final answer go for it continue to use that that route if you come up with the same answer as me all right so um, we want to know what will be the velocity at the end of 17 seconds so in other words I don't know my final velocity um, I do know the initial velocity because it's talking about the car in problem number three well our initial velocity was 25 meters per second My acceleration we actually know now we solved it up here so that negative 1.25 meters per second squared that is my acceleration so now knowing that I can figure out the the rest of this problem we know our time was 17 seconds all right so let's go ahead and solve from there and I would not look at this as one big problem. Let's just take it as you know, 25. There's not really much we can do there right now. But this negative 1.25 times 17, we can deal with that. I'm going to throw that into my calculator. And I get negative 21.25. Uh, unitless, because it would really be something in meters per second squared times seconds uh, which would give me actually units of velocity but that's more than we need to know at this point now we can after this sub step finish it off the rest of the way uh, negative 21.25 I've got that in my calculator already so I can just hit plus um, and 20, 25 and that will automatically bring that former answer um, up in my up in my calculator there so it saves you a few keystrokes if you do it that way and I'm left with 3.75 it should be meters per second because it is a velocity that we're dealing with and hopefully this makes sense that it's 3.75 meters per second like this answer this answer would make um, it would make a lot of sense it would be a very reasonable answer you know if I got something that was greater than 25 well obviously that's not going to be good because if I'm going 25 meters per second to begin with and I'm slowing down that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense um, and I know that this should be closer to 0 than 25 because if we think about what's happening here 
So my car is going 25 meters per second to begin with. It's slowing down over the course of its travel. By the time it hits over here, it is going zero meters per second. So I am at the end of 17 seconds, tells us before, it took 20 seconds to get to this point. So it'd be zero seconds over here or our start. So 17 seconds is somewhere around here. So in other words, I'm closer to the end of my path of travel than I was to begin with. Now halfway would be around 12 and a half meters per second. Um, all the way would be zero, so it makes sense that I'm it makes sense that I am at the velocity that I am at. It's 3.75 meters per second. And of course we could take this, plug it back in for our final velocity and solve for vi or solve for a, solve for t, any one of those that we want. And we should come up with 25 if we're solving for vi. We should come up with negative 1.25 if we solve for a. And we should come up with 17 if we solve for time during our check step. So the um, last couple problems here, let's take a look at number five, and then we'll finish it, finish off this page with the problem after that. Um, so we want to know the acceleration of a plane when it's changing velocity from 140 to 70 meters per second over the course of 15 seconds. Um, so there's a few ways that we could, could write this formula. Um, this might be a, a point where you want to switch over to representing your acceleration formula like this. If you don't um, get why we're, why we're doing that, it's because we're looking at this change of 140 down to 70. So I've got a, a final velocity and initial velocity that I can add in there, or put in there I should say, not to confuse with mathematical addition. Um, and I know my time is 15 seconds. Then I don't have to deal with any sort of algebra, it's just a, you know, a is a is right there. I don't have to isolate anything. Um, since we've been going with this other format, though, it may make more sense to just stick with that format if you don't really like going between the two. Um, either way is is totally up to you. Um, this is the one time that I would kind of break the the nice aesthetic of this formula and actually go with this other one, though, personally. Um, but let's continue with the one that we've we've been going with. Um, so we want to know the acceleration. So I'm not really sure about a quite yet. Um, and it's changing its velocity from 140 meters per second to 70 meters per second. So what the heck's going on there? Well, I'm starting at 140 meters per second. Or my initial velocity is there. The plane isn't actually starting at 140 meters per second. It's just that this is the point of, the, of travel that we care about in the plane. It is the initial velocity that I care about. It doesn't have to be the literal initial velocity that the plane was going at because that would, of course, be zero. Um, and it's changing velocity from that larger number to a smaller number. My final velocity is that over the course of 15 seconds. So I already know before I even do any of the math here, conceptually I'm going from 140 to 70, which means I'm slowing down. So my acceleration, it would make sense that I come out with a, a negative number in this case. So my final velocity we know was 70. My initial velocity was 140. I don't know my acceleration, but I do know my time. It's 15. So I usually like to rewrite these um, formulas just with the, the variable last. A times 15 and 15A would be the same thing. There's no reason to have to do that sub-step. It's just, personally, I think it's aesthetically more pleasing. Better visual, in other words. Um, and then at this point, let's take a look at what we can do. So A is currently being multiplied by 15. Um, and even before we look at that though, we've got this 140 that's hanging out here. So let's get, try to get it to a point where we've just got the variable along with anything else that it, that is by it um, on its own. So in other words, let's get rid of this 140. And hopefully you can see already why, we, why we're gonna come out with a negative answer. Um, so I'm left with 70 minus 140, which would of course be negative 70, equals 15 times A or 15A. I'm going to rewrite this up here just because we are running out of a little room down there. Not the um, best real estate, so to speak, on this page. 
Uh, and now at this point, let's go ahead and get A by itself. Um, how should I get A by itself? And of course, just like any other problem in in algebra, I'm not looking at it as I'm, you know, what am I doing to these two numbers? It's just simply, I don't, I don't even care about this negative 70. What I care about is that currently the variable is being multiplied by 15, so let's do the opposite. And if I do that to one side, I of course have to do it to the other side, otherwise it changes the meaning of the problem. So then I'm left with, in the end, a equals whatever 70 time or negative negative 70 divided by 15 is, which would be negative 4.6. Now negative 4.6 repeating, so we could round it off to either negative 4.67, negative 4.7, either way that would be perfectly acceptable. And this would be in meters per second squared because I'm losing meters per second every single second that I'm traveling. In other words, I'm losing velocity every single second that I'm traveling. That's the true meaning of that of that unit. And again, take that, plug it back in for A, go to solve for one of the other um, letters, one of the other variables, and see if you come up with something that was in the problem. Then if you, if you do, you know you're in good shape. All right, so the very final problem here, let's take a look at this, this bicyclist and what they are doing, All right? Um, we want to know what the bicyclist's initial velocity is if after accelerating at a constant rate of 2 meters per second squared for 30 seconds the final velocity was this 90 meters per second. Um, so again it does look like I'm going to be using the the same formula here so this whole page was just to practice on using this one particular formula rather than coming out and saying that though um, it is nicer to take a look at why we're using the formulas that we are rather than oh this is just the formula you know that we're that we're practicing. Uh, it makes more sense logically. My um, final velocity, we actually know. It's 90 meters per second. Um, my initial velocity, what was that? Oh, what was the bike's initial velocity? So in other words, I don't really know. Uh, and we do know that it's accelerating at a constant rate of positive 2 meters per second squared. And we know how long it was going for. Total of total of 30 seconds here. And so now we can solve it out. 2 times 30 would give me 60. Let's go ahead and get VI by itself, or this initial velocity by itself. And remember, we're never going to insert anything for I. That's just simply record keeping, telling us that this is the initial velocity that we're dealing with, as opposed to the final or any other velocity for that matter. So let's get rid of our 60. Currently, VI is being um, 60 is being added to VI. So let's subtract it. And if we do it to one side, of course, we have to do it to the other side. So I'm left with, you know, 30 equals VI, which would be a better way to write it would be VI equals 30. And I am dealing with a velocity, so I know I've got to go with the same unit as I was going with for my final velocity is meters per second. So I'm left with VI equals 30 meters per second. All right. Hopefully you're feeling really good with this. Um, if, if not, obviously email, remind, um, whatever you have to do to get a hold of me. I will, I'm glad to talk to you a little bit more about this. All right.